Well, greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagall 3D. Uh, by request from South Africa, today we have a vlog. And the title of this vlog is Embedding Things into Print for Nova Maker Fair. Um, I have eight, nine days, nine days until the Northern Virginia Maker Fair, which is called Maker Fair Nova. Uh, this is my third year doing a booth at the Maker Fair Nova. Uh, the first year I did blender modeling techniques, which I'm not sure if it made for the most exciting booth. Last year I did multicolored prints with a single extruder machine. And this year I thought I'd focus on embedding things into prints. So I have a variety of different examples. Uh, first off, I have prints within prints, which I think uh, you guys who've watched my channel have seen before. I have the angler fish, which has the glow fill pieces inside the bronze fill. Uh, the multicolored gyro cube, uh, that is a print that I embed inside of other prints. Um, the only new thing I have is a giant spinning pokey stop. Um, with this one, I wasn't confident in my bridging settings with the 0.75 millimeter nozzle. So what I ended up doing was printing the access piece and then I embedded it into the final pokey stop piece to allow the spinning. Of course, right after I did that, I saw like Joel Telling doing a 200 millimeter bridge. So I know it's possible, but you know, this is the route that I went. Yay! Let's see, uh, mirrors. If you follow my channel, you've seen that before. Uh, so I'll definitely have examples of mirrors inside prints. This is the candle holder that I did on my channel. Uh, I have a vase as well, um, which you can also see highlighted on Travis and Heather's channel at IA Pyro Designs. I'll put the link down below. Um, nuts, we've seen that just in my most recent video with the tap handles. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to add to this is I'm going to make myself drawer pulls. So um, I love the Appalachian Trail. Um, one of my favorite plants on the Appalachian Trail is the rhododendron that you see on top of the mountaintops, uh, particularly at Grayson Highlands and uh, Mount Rogers in Southwest Virginia. Uh, so I have this little model that I did in Blender that's a rhododendron. And what I want to do is, I don't think I have it, I, I want to embed a nut into it and make it into a drawer pool. So I have nine days to get an example of that. Sand! You can embed sand into prints. So for some experiments there, uh, first off, I started off with, oh, okay, that's done. I don't need attention to it. Uh, my first example that I tried was a little tiny uh, standing cancer ribbon. It is a small, lightweight print. So I've noticed at outdoor fairs, it can fall down pretty easily. So um, what I did was pause the print, fill it up with sand. I did it in the, on the Wanhow here, uh, two reasons. Lion has a cheaper printer, and uh, two, the electronics panel is to the side of the Wanhow, where on the Maker Gear, the electronics panel is right here underneath the bed, so I was worried if I felt, you know, spilled sand, it's going into places I don't want it to go. In the small cancer ribbon, the sand only made about two grams of difference in the print itself, um, but it actually had a effect on the stability of it. So the next one that I did uh, is just this little, uh, this is a historic building in my town. Uh, I had um, done them as Christmas ornaments uh, this past year and it actually hung on the governor's mansion of Virginia. Uh, it's pretty lightweight, I think like 50 grams. Uh, when I filled it up with, when I filled it up with sand, it went to 153 grams. I'm ballpark. It went to ballpark. So it about uh, went three times as heavy. Oh, uh, if before I get to do any kind of detailed video on the sand, if you try to do that, uh, what I'd recommend when you restart your print um, to seal the sand in, uh, go ahead and turn off your cooling fan so it's not blowing the sand around. So the next thing are split rings or jump rings. They're like little tiny metal circles that you can use in jewelry. Uh, I've used them on prints before where I glue them to the print to help make Christmas ornaments. Uh, I decided I wanted to try embedding those into the prints. This would probably be my smallest object that I'm embedding in, except for sand. Sand would be smaller. Anyways. My concept here was I've been daydreaming a while for a kinetic houndstooth, a houndstooth that is moving and fluid. 
Uh, this I've been sketching and trying to figure out a way to strategize it since my Shapeways days before I owned any printers and now it's time had come. Um, what I ended up doing is I just modeled a hound's tooth in Blender and then I put in a six millimeter or put in a hole to hold a six millimeter split ring, jump ring and um, Yes, using the multiple processes in Simplify 3D, pause the print, and I put those little jump rings in and um, let it go. The end result is it is sort of fluid and flexible and, and this and that. And um, yeah, you may notice that this is bigger than my print bed, and that's because uh, some of the split rings that I'm embedding in are from the existing prints. So what am I going to do with this? N I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm going to try to figure it out this weekend. I'm going to run to a thrift store and see if I um, strike any inspiration. And maybe there's like a skirt and I can, you know, like cut it and, and put this in as a stripe where you can sort of see tasteful skin underneath, tasteful, a tasteful area. Uh, the challenges I have there is I am not very fashion oriented and the other thing is um, I'm not a good sewer. Um, we have a lot of wine corks here and so another project was something to do with those wine corks and my idea was I wanted to try to make a wine holder out of wine corks. I ended up doing a model last weekend and uh, this is not a perfect print. I will be specifically not showing you close-up shots because you'll see all the variety of places where I messed up. And the frustrating part of it is I messed it up from my own meddling. I had a um, point where the print was going to pause for me to insert all those corks and I was impatient. And as the print was going in, you know, I was just inserting corks throughout the day I wasn't pausing the print to do it. I was you know, sort of working around as it was printing. And yeah, it was actively printing and I was holding, I, my hand collide, or this collided here, broke this piece, but I, you know, I've got it back together. And then I uh, ended up knocking a nozzle here so everything's offset. Not a perfect print, but guess what? Proof of concept. It's functional. And the wine bottle fits in and it actually will hold it. And then finally, magnets! Magnets! Magnets, I learned, you cannot do on the way how. This was probably my most hilarious fail to date. I was trying to embed magnets into a print and I had the foresight to, you know, hold it against the nozzle to see if it's going to stick to the nozzle and it was, you know, thought it was fine. I did not have the foresight to try the uh, cooling fan. So I put like my little magnets in, I started the print, and those things leapt out of the print and onto the cooling fan. So luckily the cooling fan in the Maker Gear M2 is plastic. So uh, I've been doing a proof of concept here. I made uh, life counters for my husband for his uh, Magic the Gathering uh, Friday Night Magic games. What I'm hoping to do in the next nine days is there's this great Instructables article where a fella has taken uh, dice and he's drilled out holes and put in glued in magnets and he's made like a working Rubik's Cube. So I have all my sketching, I have all the polarities that I need to do and what I need to, to model uh, thanks to that guy's instructable article and I'll put a link down below. And uh, I've got my magnets and I've gone through and uh, marked the polarities of uh, I think it was 124 magnets but I think I only need, I need 6 plus 12. Um, 108. I think I only need 108 magnets. So I'm hoping to print that in the next week and um, finish that up before Maker Fair. I'm excited about that one. Well, that's today's episode. As you can tell, I'm always sort of a little busy or got some projects going on. If you are in striking distance of the Northern Virginia area and you have no plans on March 19th, come join us at the uh, Northern Virginia Maker Fair. Uh, it is in Reston, Virginia. I will put the link down below and where you can buy tickets. Uh, and if you do come, swing by and say hi. I would love to meet you. Thank you guys for watching and have a fantastic day.